and Poverty Committee uh, for this Thursday, May 26, 2022. I am Councilmember Kevin DeLeon, the chair of this committee. I'm going to turn it over to you, uh, Luigi, to establish a quorum, please. Councilmember DeLeon. Here. Councilmember Rahman. Yes, here. Councilmember Buscaino. Councilmember Buscaino is absent. Councilmember Rodriguez. Here. Councilmember Blumenfield. Councilmember Blumenfield is absent. Three members and a chair, and a quorum, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Luigi. I want to welcome um, uh, Ms. Rahman as well as uh, Ms. Uh, Rodriguez. We'll be expecting our, our other members to be joining us uh, shortly. Before we take public comment, I want to go over what we're going to do specifically uh, for this homeless and poverty meeting here today. Uh, we have for file item number one, uh, we'll be having a brief conversation with Jessica Law, who is the mayor's recommendation for the LASA uh, commission. Uh, for final item number two, I'm going to recommend that we discontinue, I should say, we continue the file item to the next uh, homeless and poverty meeting. Um, I also recommend that we move file item number three on consent uh, that we note and file with the LA Housing uh, Department and report and, the, and re approve the CAO's report. For file item number four, which will be actually quite interesting, I'm going to recommend that we approve the CAO's recommendation to the report, but prior to doing so, we have some technical amendments that I'd like the CAO's office to read into the record. Be mindful, I believe that Mindy will be reading this. Uh, this is going to be quite lengthy, the number of amendments. Uh, so, um, uh, Mindy, are you there with us? Hi, yes, I'm here. Okay, why don't we, and uh, the record note that we have been joined by Mr. Blumenfield as well. Uh, Luigi, thank you very much. Uh, Mindy, if you can go ahead. This is going to be lengthy, uh, colleagues, as well as the public, but these are the amendments. All right. Uh, good morning, and thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm Mindy Patongsman with the Office of the CAO, and I'll be reading the uh, amendment to the 11th COVID-19 Homelessness Roadmap Funding Report, which is number... I have number four on today's agenda, and so um, I'll go ahead and get started. So um, we would like the following to be amended. We would like to rescind recommendation 31 and 32 of the homelessness roadmap report, the 11th homelessness roadmap report. Amend recommendations 3, 4, 19, 20, 24B, 25, 30C, 43, and 47, and replace with the following. So for recommendation three, we would like to transfer up to $3,752,687.05 for the construction of a tiny home village with 41 beds at 600 East 116 Place in Council District 15 from the following accounts. $131,705.05 from the Additional Homeless Services General City Purposes Account, or AHS, GCP for short. Fund number 100, Department 56, account number 000931 to the Capital Technology Improvement Expenditure Program, or CTIP for short. Uh, fund number 100, Department 54, and a new account entitled CD15600 East 116th Place, THB, and $3,620,982. From Homeless Housing Assistance and Prevention Grant Program Round 2, or HAP 2 for short. Fund number 64J, Department 10, account number 10B771, funding category COVID 19 Homelessness Roadmap Operating Costs to fund 64J, Department 10, to uh, and a new account entitled CD15600 East 116 Place, THB. And then recommendation number four to authorize the Department of General Services, or GSD, to negotiate and execute a lease agreement with the California Department of Transportation, Caltrans, for a tiny home village with 41 beds at 600 East 116th Place in Council District 15. And then 19, to approve the proposed funding categories and amounts allocated to LASA for operating costs of previously approved roadmap interventions from July 1, 2022 through June 30, 2023, as outlined in Table 1. Um, and further details are proposed in the attachment to of the 11th roadmap report. So funding category 1 is for tiny home village operations, an amount of $24,629,014 
Funding Category 2 is a bridge home operations for $21,364,910. Funding Category 3 is other interim housing operations for $19,288,004. Funding Category 4 is project home key operations for $23,043,819. Five, funding category five is safe parking operations for $2,409,000. Funding category six is safe sleep operations for $3,056,875. Funding category seven is interim housing leasing for $647,991. Uh, funding category eight is outreach for $2,472,188. $2,472,188, and this all totals up to $96,911,801. Oh, let me repeat that. $96,911,801 for, for recommendation 19. Recommendation 20 is to, to be amended to transfer up to $76,446,958 from the homeless Miss Efforts and County Funding Agreement, Fund Number 63Q, Department 10, Account Number 10T618 for operating costs to continue roadmap interventions from July 1, 2022 through June 30, 2023 as follows. $24,629,014 to Fund Number 63Q, Department 43, and a new account entitled 2022-23 Lhasa Tiny Home Village Operations. He is to uh, $21,364,910 to fund number 63Q, Department 43, a new account entitled 2022-23 Lhasa Abridged Home Operations. Uh, $19,288,004 to fund 63Q, Department 43, for a new account entitled 2022-23 Lhasa Other Interim Housing Operations. D is for... $5,051,164 to fund number 63Q, Department 43, and a new account entitled 2022-23 LASA Project Home Key Operations. E is um, $2,409,000 to fund 63Q, Department 43, a new account entitled 22-23 um, LASA, um, LASA Safe Sleep Operations. And then G is $647,991 to fund number 63Q, Department 43, a new account entitled 2223 LASA Interim Housing Leasing. We're going to recommendation 24B um, to note that Howard Johnson, located at 7432 Reseda Boulevard, Reseda 91342, will be known as a sorority. And then recommendation 25 to approve Project Home Key One Travel Lodge Normandy ESGCV funding swap as follows. Transfer up to 726000 from Project Home Key One State Operating Subsidy Fund number 63Y, account number 43TA42 to fund 517, account number 43TA Tiny Home Operations. 1221 figure out please and process the expenditure corrections for this site to utilize the safe uh, the, to utilize a state home key operating subsidy to partially fund operational costs of 75 interim housing beds at 1221 figure out please in council district 15 through june 30 2022 direct the general manager uh, the Los Angeles Housing Department or their designee to amend or execute any necessary contracts that effectuate this instruction Request that LASA amend the contracts with Project One, Project Home Key One operator of the Travel Lodge Normandy Path and operator of the site of 1221 Figaro Place, the Salvation Army, to effectuate the, recommend, the, the recommendations. D recognize that there's $726,000 in savings from ESGCV and as a result of this expenditure correction. And then 30C to reprogram 4 million, up to 4 million. $755,967 from ESGCV savings from ESGCV fund number 517, department 43, account number 43VC9V, entitled COVID-19 Homeless Roadmap to Fund 517, department 43, account number 43TA43, account entitled Home Key Rehab, 
um, for the LA Family Housing Rehab of Life and Safety Accessibility feature for Project Home Cute Long at the um, Howard Johnson for the sorority in our housing site located at 7432 Reseda Boulevard, Reseda 91342, pending final review and approval by the Home Key One real estate consultant, Brilliant Corners. 43 is to instruct the general manager of the Los Angeles Housing Department or their designee to exercise the extension of the roadmap contract number C-137223 with LASA by one year with a new contract end date of September 30, 2023 and to amend the contract to reflect the recommendations in the report as follows. And to reflect the service allocation, service funding allocation amendments in this part for other interim housing site at the 1904 Bailey Street, implement the loss of roadmap funding categories for fiscal year 22-23 as seen in Table 1 in Recommendation 19. Uh, roadmap interventions described in attachment two of the 11th homelessness roadmap report dated May 2022 and in this amending motion. Um, the roadmap outreach teams and Project Home Key, Travel Lodge Normandy, and 1221 um, Figueroa Plate Tiny Home Village funding swap. Project Home Key as described in recommendation 30A through 30C. Um, safe parking at 15380 Oxnard Street. Safe parking at 545111th Street, PRK ramp down, PRK housing navigation funded by ESG CV, reflect the hotel name changes as described in this report, and increase the expenditure authority for rapid rehousing shared housing from $55 million to $82,285,920, about to 2,000 enrolled households through December 31, 2022. 47 is to be amended to instruct the city clerk to place on the agenda of the first regular council meeting on July 1 or shortly thereafter the following instructions. Approve the reappropriation up to $131,705.05 from the additional homeless services GCP, the number 100, department 56, account number 000931 to the CTIEP, um, phone number 100 department 54 and a new account entitled CD 15, 600 East 116th place THV for the construction of the tiny home village with 41 beds at 600 East 116th place in Council District 15. Approve the reappropriation up to $88,619 from the AHS GCP for number 100 um, department 56, account number 000931 to the CTIP. Fund number 100, Department 54, account number 00T754. Uh, the title of the account is 19020-19040 Van Owen for one, for one additional pallet in the tiny home village site located at 19040 Van Owen Street in Council District 3. Approve the reappropriation up to $12,865 from the Additional Homeless Services GCP fund number 100, Department 56, account number 000931 to the following accounts for the addition of a fence at the tiny home village site located at 6073 Reseda Boulevard in Council District 3. $2,210 to GSD fund number 100, Department 40, account number 001014 for salaries construction, construction projects. $10,655 to GSD fund number 100, department 40, account number 003180 for construction materials. Approve the reappropriation up to $49,229 from the additional homeless services fund number 100, department 56, account number 000931 to the following counts for the construction costs at the West LA. VA a bridge home site in Council District 11 for the ADA compliance railing. Um, the, the breakdown is $24,997 to GSD fund number 100, Department 40, account number 001101 for hiring hall construction. Uh, 16391 to GSD fund number 100, Department 40, account number 001121, benefits hiring hall construction. And um, 
841 to GSD, phone number 100, department 40, account number 003180 for construction materials. Um, next, let's approve the reappropriation up to $86,817 from the AHS GCP fund number 100, Department 56, account number 000931 to the GSD fund number 100, Department 40, account number 003180, construction materials to reimburse outstanding construction costs at the West LA uh, Veterans Affair at Bridge Home Site in Council District 11. Uh, next is transfer up to $392,921 from, um, from the GCP account 100, depart fund 100, fund 100, department 56, account number 000957, project room key, COVID-19 emergency response for the administrative, administrative costs associated with city's project room key program extensions as follows. 9000 635 to Fund 100, Department 40, account number 001010 for salaries for one senior management analyst from July 1, 2022 to December 31, 2022. Choose $2,000 or $2,086 to Fund 100, Department 40, account number 001010, account for salaries for one 120 day senior real estate. Officer from July 1, 2022 to December 31, 2022. $381,200 to GSD from 100, Department 63, account number 000026, project room key leasing for CBRE contractual expenses through December 31, 2022. Next is to amend the approved recommendations in the uh, recommendation um, 10A relative to the 10th roadmap funding report due to March 3rd. 2022 to transfer up to $5,098,167 to GSD and um, to GSD and or citywide leasing and replace with the following recommendation to amend the account information and note the total salaries for the um, senior MA1 and 120-day real estate officer as follows. Transfer up to five million. $98,167 from the General City Purposes Fund number 100, Department 56, account number 000957, Project Room Key COVID-19 Emergency um, Response to GSD for Administrative Support for Extending Emergency Interim Housing Programs, 53000 to Fund 100, Department 40, account 0001010 for salaries for one senior MA from July 1, 2022 to December 31, 2022. $64,358 to Fund 100, Department, 20, I mean, Department 40, account number 001010 salaries general for one 120 day senior real estate officer from July 1, 2022 to December 31, 2022. $4,979,000. Um, $900 to fund um, 100 department 63 to account um, at account number 000026 project room key leasing for the CBRE contractual expenses through December 31, 2022. Approve up to $2,018,238.96 from the, the GCP fund number 150, 100 uh, department 56 account number um, 000957 Project Green Key COVID 19 Emergency Response from July 1, 2022 to December 31, 2022, for the administrative costs associated with the city's Project Green Key extension as follows one, up, up to $1,996,475.44 to the personnel department and up to 21000 $21, sorry. $21,763.52 for city clerk. Approve the reappropriation up to $77,000 from the additional homeless services GCP fund number 100, department 56, account number, account number uh, 000931 to fund 156, account number 000976, CD3 neighborhood service, nervous, CD3 neighborhood service enhancements for the contract with about my father's business to support the pilot storage program in council district three 
Uh, next is to approve a reappropriation of up to eleven million eight hundred eighty-four thousand two hundred fifty-four dollars for June for um, June 30, 2022 unencumbered balance from various funding sources within the CTIP account, uh, fund number one hundred, department fifty-four for the following accounts, up to six hundred fifty thousand six hundred fifty thousand five hundred seventy-six in HAP funding uh, account number zero zero T seven six one. Bridge housing at 3061 Riverside Drive for the construction cost associated with the ABH site located at 3061 Riverside in Council District 4 up to 137,255 in HAP funds. Account number 00T773 Safe Sleep Village 317 North Madison Avenue for construction costs associated with a safe sleep site located at 317 North Madison Avenue in Council District 13 up to $1,382,042 for additional homeless services account in account number 00T788, uh, CD for CD 13 Third Street. So, um, pallet shelters for construction costs associated with the tiny home village are located at 2301 West Third Street in Council District 13. Up to $1,461,304 in additional home services, GCP, Funds account number 00V835, CD6, uh, San Fernando Pallet Shelters for the construction costs of the tiny home village site at 9700 San Fernando Boulevard in Council District 6. Up to $1,654,679 in additional homeless services, GCP, funds, uh, funds in account number 00V836, CD9 Compton Avenue and Nevin. Avenue pallet shelters for the construction costs associated with the tiny home village located at Compton and Nevin in Council District 9 and up to and up to six million five hundred ninety eight thousand three hundred ninety eight dollars in additional homeless services GCP funds account number 00v846 CD1 499 San Fernando Road uh, for the construction costs associated with the interim housing site located at the 499 San Fernando Road in Council District 1. Next, we have, um, we would like to add the following recommendations to our 11th roadmap report. Um, 49, to authorize the Department of General Services to negotiate and execute a lease agreement with the Soul Bank Hotel Group for a tiny home village with 47 beds at 406 North Bonnie, Bonnie Bray Street and 413 North Burlington Avenue in Council District 13. 50 is to transfer up to $2,812,279 in additional homeless services GCP fund number 100, Department 56, account number 000931 to the Capital Technology Improvement Expenditure Program fund number 100, Department 54, account number 00V846, CD1. 499 San Fernando Road for the construction costs related to the interim housing site located at 499 San Fernando Road in Council District 1. Reduce up, uh, the um, next is uh, new recommendations for 51, uh, reduce up to $2,812,279 in CD fund community development block grant COVID funds allocated for the tiny home village at Cypress Park, um, 499 San Fernando Road in Council District 1 from Fund number 100, Department 54, account number 00V846, CD1499, San Fernando Road. Um, 52 is to um, increase up to $2,812,279 in CDBG CV fund number, um, CDBG funds um, to fund number 424, account number 43T9 CV. Um, CV-19 uh, pallet shelters for future roadmap costs. And uh, lastly, it's uh, the I would like to add recommendation 53 to approve a ninth roadmap, but a, a ninth roadmap funding category for LASA entitled Project Home Key Rehab to include Project Home Key Improvement Sites noted in Attachment 1 of the 11th COVID-19 Homelessness Roadmap Funding Report dated um, May 20, 2022. And, um, that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mindy. Uh, Consultant, please give her a glass of water. 
Uh, I think that is the longest set of amendments. Maybe Mr. Blumenfeld will have a better authority than, than, than us present here today, uh, as well as uh, perhaps Ms. Rodriguez. I think that's the longest set of memory, uh, amendments, clarifications from the CAO's office that perhaps we've had, I don't know if in a committee or just in city council, you know, as a whole, but uh, someone will give me the, uh, a glass of water or a warm cup of tea with some honey and lemon. You know, thank you so very much. I appreciate that. Um, uh, colleagues, I, I think to the, the, the list of the clarifications from the CAO's office and amendments have been all distributed uh, to your uh, respective offices as well, so you have access to it. Um, I want to thank you. Let's uh, open up now for public comment. Uh, yes, have, Mr. Chair? Yes, yes, sir. Go ahead. I did want to add one one uh, amendment to that as well, kind of just to put it out front before we get sure, sure. Please. which is um, I wanted to, to add to those amendments. I wanted to uh, make an amendment recommendations uh, to amend recommendations 35 and 43A, section 13 in the CAO report to increase the expenditure authority for the ESG CV rapid rehousing shared housing allocation to and increase the funding allocation for an additional 30 slots to fund share uh, the roadmap and, and CD3 street engagement efforts. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Right. So we're going to go now to Gita uh, from the city attorney's office. If you could be so kind to provide guidance to the public as they prepare to call in. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To the members of the public calling in, when it's your turn to speak, please state your name and which of the agenda items you would like to speak on. You will have one minute to speak on one agenda item or two minutes to speak on two or more items. In addition, those who would like to address the committee with general public comment will be provided one additional minute for a maximum of up to three minutes per person for all agenda items, including general public comment. We will inform you when your time is up. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as we can. If you are not speaking on topic, or if we cannot tell whether you are speaking on an agenda item, you will get one brief warning from the chair. If you do not immediately get clearly back on topic, or if you again stray off topic, you will forfeit the rest of your time and we will move on to the next speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I believe you're on mute, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Gita, uh, very much. Uh, Luigi, if you could be so kind enough to give instructions for our callers, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call <coughs> 1 669 254 5252 and use meeting ID number 160 453 9676 and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Luigi. Uh, I think staff are ready to take on public comments. Sarah, if you could be so kind enough to make sure that our callers state their first name and the items that they'd like to speak on. Go ahead and take them. Caller with the number ending in 9713. Please state your name and the items on which you'd like to speak. Good morning, council members. I'm Melissa Gregg with the Justin Contemporary at MOCA, and I'm here to speak on item number three. Thank you to Chairman Guglielm and the fellow committee members for your leadership on our city's homeless issues. MOCA is very excited about the many changes this project will bring to our shared block and the larger Little Tokyo community. It's also a very necessary project that will help get our fellow engineers off the street and into housing. As you can imagine, though, as a museum, the Justin has identified a few unique sensitivities such as dust, noise, and vibrations to consider during the construction process. We look forward to coordinating with LTSC both before and during construction to mitigate these impacts as much as possible. We see ourselves as a partner to LTSC and the city in this effort, and we thank you for your time. Thank you, caller. Um, caller with the number ending in 2979, please. the items on which you'd like to speak. Hello, my name is Peggy Lee Kennedy with the Venice Justice Committee. I would like to speak on general public comment, agenda item one, two, and four. 
Uh, item two has been continued. Um, you have three minutes. Um, first of all, for my general public comment, I want to say that moving people from a park or from streets when you do not have enough options to offer them is completely cruel. We have to do better as a community. And I understand that uh, there is uh, a lot of this going on outside of our district and some within our district of CD11. But it's uh, the people are sick and disabled. If you move them, they get dis disconnected from their services. Um, agenda item one. Um, look. I don't understand. I think you should vote no on this because why are we having a pro business advocate on the LASA, um, you know, uh, advisory board commission? We need people who are connected to low income housing, uh, non profit development for homeless people. And we need people who are uh, very connected to developing permanent housing. So, where is the permanent housing? We need more of that. You know, you keep pushing this shelter thing. It's massive. Just this temporary shelter. You know, less than 17% of these people go to permanent housing because we don't have it. We really need to focus our major investment there right now. Doing what you're doing with these shed villages, just, you're just forcing people off the street into a temporary solution to go nowhere. And look at all the money you're spending on this. I have never seen so many amendments. I can't believe that this would be legal for you to even vote on with this many amendments read into the file right now at a committee. First of all, it's huge. You need to separate it out. Second of all, I don't believe you can legally read that many. It's so substantial. I can't believe it. My head is splitting splitting at how you have done it like this. It needs to be uh, split up into smaller sections by the type of thing you're amending and promoted in writing so people have a chance to legitimately comment. It's too substantial. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller with the number ending in 0141. Please state your name and the items in which you'd like to speak. Call out the number ending in 0141. Please state your name and the items on which you'd like to speak. Call out the number ending in 0141. There you go. Please state your name and the items on which you'd like to speak. I'd like to okay. speak on item number two. Uh, item number two has been continued. You may speak on like general to, public comment. I will speak on general public comment. Venice is drowning in drug addiction. Okay, you have one minute. Bridge, ha Bridge housing ha it stands empty right down the street, but the encampment in front of the library, right next to a proposed massive site, continues to multiply. Not coincidentally, in the past two weeks alone, two men high on meth kicked their way into my home at 3.30 in the morning, had to be chased out with a knife while I hid my two kids in a bathroom. Four people have openly done drugs next to my house or on my driveway. I almost ran over one, pulling out. And last night, an unhoused neighbor entered my neighbor's front yard, pulled his pants down, masturbated on her porch, then stole a couch cushion and left. So while millions of dollars are being wasted on consultants and grifters to push useless projects, they should be being spent on getting drug addicts off the street and into the addiction centers that would actually help them. This is inhumane that both People in the community and the drug addicts themselves are living in their own filth in front of the library and breaking into and doing disgusting things in our neighborhood. It is completely ineffective. CD11 has been completely ineffective in doing anything to address this problem. Thank you, it continues to cement Venice escape. Okay. With that, I'm going to close the public comment.
with the caller with the number ending in 9159, um, please state your name and the items on which you'd like to speak. You're currently muted. Yes, yes. hi. Um, my name is Ed. Um, in Venice, I want to speak on agenda item number two. Item number two has been continued. Um, you may speak on general public comment. You would have one minute. Um, I've lived in Venice for over 25 years, and uh, I agree with the previous caller that the homeless situation is is nothing like it's ever been. Um, we have homeless people kind of wandering the sidewalks and jaywalking at all hours of the day and night, um, muttering to themselves, and uh, you know, hugely expensive, obscenely expensive housing project being developed. It's just going to take way too long and be ineffective for what's really needed. And I think uh, the city council really ought to focus on mental health uh, to help these people even become prepared to be able to live in an apartment. Um, and I think CD11 has been uh, just kind of abandoned Venice and uh, exacerbated this problem. Um, so I hope that, um, you know, functional. Thank you, caller. Caller with the number ending in 7174. Please state your name and the item on which you'd like to speak. Hi, I'd like to speak on uh, public comment. And uh, you said the agenda item two has been uh, canceled. It has been continued, yes. So oh, if you'd like to speak with general public comment, you would have one minute. Uh, I could, just would like to say the Los Angeles Housing Department needs to get people in there that know what to look for, how to help, and how to better assist the people in the city, across the city. I work, uh, my name is Lottie Williams. I work with Save Venice. And we work with the people on uh, 3rd and on Hampton. And a lot of the people that come through are not familiar with the problems that people have. So better educated people will get better response. And we need to send this back to the mayor and have the people come out and really assist people in the needs that they have. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller with the number ending in 0899. Please state your name and the items on which you'd like to speak. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Please state your name and the items on which you'd like to speak. My name is Stacy Dawson Stearns, and I'd like to speak on item one. Okay, you have one minute. I, you know, appointing Jessica Law to LASA is not doing a, a service to the city. It's a conflict of interest. But we can't have people who are actually running bids, business improvement districts, who are notoriously connected to developers and notoriously um, useful to people who'd like to sweep the streets of the the, um, the inconvenience of the poverty that our city government has contributed to upholding by directing funds towards everywhere but housing. So, you know, a lot of people listening may not understand the relationship between the city and business improvement districts, and you have to do your own research. But, you know, we, they basically get money from the city to hire their own little police forces. And so having a person who's, got, who's connected in this way, put in, into any position of power, is completely ridiculous. Thank you, caller. Caller with the number ending in 1115. Uh, please state your name and the items on which you'd like to speak. Uh, yes, hi. General public comment? Okay, you have one minute. Thank you. Sean O'Brien. Um, 
I would uh, like to say that for the last 20 years or longer, uh, the city, the city council, the mayor has all contributed to this crisis that we're facing with homelessness. So you guys are part of the problem. You create a crisis and you want thousands, millions, billions of dollars to fix it and to be our uh, saviors riding in on a white horse. Uh, the transparency, the lack of transparency is appalling. Uh, the shenanigans that go on on trying to get the, uh, uh, the Venice Medium project through is ridiculous. Um, you guys gotta start doing your job and you gotta start doing it ethically and you gotta be fiscally responsible. I'm just so sick of it. I, I almost need a, uh, it's almost a full-time job trying to, trying to fight Mike Bonin and, and the ridiculousness that uh, the city puts forward towards these un Thank you, caller. Caller with the number ending in 7531. Please state your name and the items on which you'd like to speak. Hi, this is Ruth. I'm an unhoused person. Um, I want to speak on item one and give general public comment, please. Okay, you have two minutes, caller. Thank you. Um, I'd like to oppose Jessica Law's appointment by the mayor to the Law Staff Commission. Um, the mayor before um, Garcetti appointed Terry Morrison of the Hollywood Property Owners Association, um, and she sat on the commission. She actually became chair, law collecting 200000 a year from the HPOA. Um, I believe she stepped down, but she's still creating um, chaos like in the HHH Citizens Oversight Committee. She's blocked a man from housing because she didn't think he could make noodles properly. I have a recording of it. Um, the the CCALA has bragged on its website that it's expanded housing downtown since 2012 by 17,000 units. And only 500 of them, less than 3%, were affordable. And everyone knows that affordable housing isn't even affordable. I don't know how she plans to do anything about homelessness when her job up to this point literally is in opposition to it. It's a conflict of interest. We need people that are actually woke to, like, homelessness issues and civil rights. And the bid, the, the bid that she's the chair of, um, they actually opposed the homeless bill of rights that went to the state capitol. Um, actively, they sent emails at the last minute and it did not pass. They have been on the wrong side of every single lawsuit, like the Mitchell, so, uh, the Mitchell case, they wanted us to settle, um, the LA Alliance case. They, uh, she was actually endorsed by one of the uh, partners at Gibson and Dunn, the law firm that represented boys. Thank you, caller. Caller with the number ending in 3612. Please state your name and the items on which you'd like to speak. Hello? Yes, hi, caller. Please state your name and the items on which you'd like to speak. Uh, yes, hi. Um, my name is Linda Meltzer, a Venice resident, and it's general comment. I just wanted to say that uh, while I'm all for um, some project in the median um, and helping the crisis, it's just the current proposed Mike Bonin is, um, should, be re, should be rethought and redone because the community is very guessed for many great reasons. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller with the number ending in 9095. Please state your name and the item on which you'd like to speak. Okay. Okay. Hello? Yes. Please state your name okay. and the items on which you'd like to speak. Yes, uh, Rachel Placencia, 
speaking, I guess, on number three. Um, okay, you have one minute, caller. Okay, because the Venice Boulevard um, uh, site is located at Venice Beach, it is um, so important and unique. This project needs to have the appropriate permits and environmental reviews. Venice Beach is the huge attraction that's visited by thousands of travelers every year, and most importantly, it is the beach that is the easiest to access by most Angelinos. Before the pandemic, especially during the summer, the buses would bring families and teenagers down to spend a day at the beach. How is this going to affect our families and the families in the neighborhood? This project would not be built at Will Rogers. We were informed that the most mentally ill would be grouped here. How will these people be rehabilitated? Currently, crime is out of control and the streets are filthy. All the people of LA need to have a beach area that is clean and safe. And this is what the city should be focusing on. I urge you to please rethink your decision. Thank you, caller. Uh, caller with the number ending in 3768. Please state your name and the items on which you'd like to speak. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, Mike Newhouse here to uh, speak on general public comment. Okay, caller. You have one. Thank you, and, and specifically I'll be speaking on item two, though it's uh, been tabled as general comment. Uh, I am Mike Newhouse. I'm running for uh, Los Angeles City Council in uh, the council district at issue here in Venice, obviously. Uh, council members, nice to speak to you uh, in a more formal setting today as opposed to uh, out on the trail. Uh, as you know, I am a former West Los Angeles Area Planning Commission president, uh, and I'm also a two-time former president of the Venice Neighborhood Council. I think it's important uh, for everybody to understand that this project uh, not only ignored community input during the process, we've got about a one to $1.2 million price per key price tag on it, which is incredibly inefficient. Um, we do have an incomplete city council file, uh, as this committee probably knows, and that was part of the reason it was sent back to Plum and now to your committee. Uh, and most importantly, the LA Alliance settlement which the city council just approved on May 11th has new shelter legal requirements, which trigger a whole need for this project to be reheard by the new city council. Uh, when this item eventually gets heard, either here at Plum, uh, I urge it to be Thank you, caller. Caller with the number ending in 9872. Please state your name and the item on which you'd like to speak. Yes, hi, thank you. My name is Austin. I'd like to speak on the first agenda and a general public comment. Okay, Gary, you have two minutes. So I just wanted to say if there was such a developer uh, that we would hold their feet to the fire, if not completely reject them, seeing how, again, affordable housing is as well unaffordable. I don't, I don't know how there is... Uh, mental health amongst rich nor poor and such a, a capitalistic society. Uh, our society has been highly appropriated and not distributed at all to the people. Nobody owns any land. Every piece of land is owned, which I find unfair. Uh, crime I find highly subjective. I find people in charge to be criminal at times, most of the time. And, uh, people who are called criminals to be uh, people trying to survive. So I find it dangerous for everybody, rich and poor, poor on the edge of starvation or on the edge of being pushed out on the street in the cold. I don't, I don't know if anyone knows what the cold is like uh, at night without a roof. It sucks. Uh, and dangerous for the rich because they're going to uh, take in again. Crime must increase for survivability. It's about adaptation and being an animal. Please remember... Humans are domesticated animals and treat us well. Uh, nobody should own anybody else. This is uh, similar to slavery and feudalism. Uh, we have a, a distribution of wealth equal to the time of the pharaohs. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I think we're going to have to take criminal action, so-called, to uh, make our voice heard. And I yield back the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank 
caller with the number ending in 2696, would you please state your name and the items on which you'd like to speak? Hi there. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I'd like to speak on item number one, public comment, um, mostly because item number two has been tabled. My name okay, is Christine May. Thank you. Uh, my name is Christine May. I'm a Venice stakeholder, homeowner, a parent who's raised her kids here in the city in the public schools. I would just like to say that, uh, I mean, obviously the homeless situation has become incredibly dangerous here. Uh, every day I sort of encounter homeless people wandering around the streets and, um, you know, they were all on the beach during the pandemic and now they have relocated to in front of the library. And I just, I honestly, I went to go vote a few weeks ago and I, there was a homeless man hanging on top of the ballot box. And I also feel like the library is unusable. Kids are not going to be able to go there during the summer. Um, it's just not safe. So uh, I would just like to say that something needs to be done that does not involve a bloated and under-permitted development. Um, I really, I really, really hope the city can get it together. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, caller. With the caller with the number ending in 0731, Please state your name and the items on which you'd like to speak. Yes, this is Judy White, and I wanted to speak about item number two. And I'm speaking in opposition to it. I think that many people have articulated it. Caller, call the item number two has been continued, so you may speak on general public comment. You have one minute. Yes. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah, my name is Judy White, and I wanted to speak in opposition to item number two. I think that the, the needs are, are so great that the solution of relatively few housing units at an extraordinary cost per unit is the wrong direction for the city to go. I think we need to focus on places within the city that can appropriately be used for larger numbers of units and where services can be provided on site and the idea of scattering these around in areas that are already very crowded and impacted have been used as resort areas, beach areas for the public is the wrong direction to go. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, callers. I appreciate uh, you taking time out of your busy schedules uh, to call in and uh, make comments that are very important to each and every one of you. Uh, to to the members uh, here today, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm making the following recommendations uh, on consent. Uh, file item number one, I'm going to recommend that we continue this item until, uh, I should say, I apologize, file item number two. Uh, again, for those folks who are calling in from Venice, file item number two, uh, we're going to continue uh, this item until the next homeless and poverty meeting. Uh, file item number three, we're going to note and file the LA Housing Department report and approve the CA's project, or report, I should say. Uh, file on number, number four, approve the CA's recommendation uh, as amended. And uh, other than that, uh, any questions uh, from the members? Are you suggesting four for consent? File uh, under four, yes, I am, for consent. Okay, I'd like a separate vote. Okay, we'll do a separate vote. We will take, again, file item number two, file uh, item number three. Uh, Mr. Uh, Berano, Luigi, if you could be so kind enough to call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we're continuing file item number two, correct? That is correct. And item three. And noting file and file number three. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilmember De Leon. Aye. Councilmember Raman. Yes. Councilmember Buscaino. Councilmember Buscaino is absent. Councilmember Rodriguez. Councilmember. Councilmember Rodriguez. Aye. Councilmember Blumenfield. Councilmember Blumenfield. Sorry, let me feel that. Four eyes, and this item is approved. 
Okay, uh, file items pass on a three to zero vote. Uh, file uh, item number four, four uh, again, that is the approval of the CAO's recommendation as amended. This was the law uh, recommendations uh, that amendments that we had just heard uh, from Mindy just a few moments ago that to make some technical uh, uh, changes and therefore uh, the long, long list of amendments. That is part of the roadmap uh, for the city of LA. So uh, we have, uh, we're gonna take that up as a separate vote uh, from the other consent files. Uh, Mr. Verano, if you could be so kind enough to call the roll. Council Member De Leon. Anytime you wanna call the roll, Luigi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Council Member De Leon. Aye. Council Member Rahman. I'm sorry, my audio cut out for a minute. What What are we voting on right now? This is file item number four. Okay, yes. Council Member Buscaino. Council Member Buscaino is absent. Council Member Rodriguez. No. Council Member Blumenfield. Blumenfield, I as amended. I'm staring at myself. Three ayes, one no, and this item is approved as amended. Thank you very much, uh, Luigi. Uh, colleagues, I want to uh, quickly just recap uh, the recommendations that we just approved. Uh, we just approved 245 units of affordable and permanent housing in Little Tokyo, uh, adjacent to downtown Los Angeles. We approved the 11th roadmap report funding recommendations uh, that include funding for 41 new interim beds in CD15, uh, funding for 219 new interim beds at two sites in CD14, uh, continued funding for 70 roadmap interventions consisting of 4,832 beds and extended two project room key sites for uh, another month. Uh, now, we just have one file item that's left uh, before us, colleagues. Uh, that is uh, an appointment that has been made uh, by our mayor, uh, Eric Garcetti, to LASA. Uh, I want to thank uh, 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 you, Mr. Verano, for uh, bringing this agenda item up because we only have one agenda file item. Uh, could you please read it into the record? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item number one is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Jessica Lal to the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Verano. Uh, Ms. Lal, I want to welcome you uh, to uh, the Homeless and Poverty Committee. Uh, I, I'm going to give you a, a few minutes to speak on how you see your new role on the LAS uh, uh, Commission. Um, I know that uh, we will have questions and, and commentaries uh, from the members uh, as well too. Why don't you take, a, an op take this opportunity to introduce yourself, uh, what your vision is for LASA, uh, um, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the specific role uh, and, uh, that you would play uh, as a member of LASA uh, being appointed uh, by Mayor Eric Garcetti. Ms. Law, welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, first, I want to acknowledge you, Chair De Leon, for your bold leadership on our homelessness crisis and for providing housing and services to literally hundreds of people, not just in downtown, but across the 14th District. Um, I think coming into this discussion, collaboration, transparency um, are going to be at the forefront of what's important. Um, I also though, want to thank you and your team for all the encampment-focused outreach and success you've had with housing placements in your term, we've seen those positive outcomes firsthand. I also want to acknowledge and thank all the members of this committee, along with your very committed staff, for uh, the ongoing dedication to doing the hard and important work of helping our most vulnerable. Um, clearly want to thank our mayor, Mayor Garcetti, for nominating me to serve as the downtown representative. Um, you all know I'm a proud LA city resident. I've lived here for over two decades. In my day job, I also have the privilege of serving as president and CEO of the Central City Association, an organization that's focused on downtown's future, uh, increasing opportunity in our region. Um, this is inextricably linked um, to a commitment to comprehensively solving homelessness. CCA proudly represents a variety of stakeholders across downtown from the 
both the private and the nonprofit sector. We are a membership organization, not a business improvement district. I know sometimes those are confused. Um, and like you, I care deeply about our city's future and really believe that homelessness is our greatest and most urgent challenge. I've tried to dedicate my work to being a part of the solution, however and wherever I can. Uh, examples of this include supporting H and HHH, a bridge home initiative, innovative housing solutions, permanent supportive housing projects, and the reimagining of Men's Central Jail. I am truly humbled by the opportunity to continue this work as a potential commissioner on LASA representing our city. Um, as a commissioner, I would first hope to work with each of you, this committee, of course the entire city council, the mayor, and my fellow commissioners to make sure that LASA uh, is more effective by strengthening coordination first and foremost between the city and the county. My other priorities include stewarding the agency through a national executive director search um, and increasing transparency, data, and accountability so there's clarity for all parties involved at LASA. I um, just want to really reiterate that I will be fighting for our city on this commission. Um, the city must receive its return on investment meaning that people uh, are the people experiencing homelessness on our streets are effectively connected with housing and services and the right hand is communicating with the left. Um, in the spirit of transparency and accountability, I would also welcome the opportunity to regularly return to this committee um, with, with updates on progress. I think we need that kind of ongoing and regular communication to make sure that we are meeting the needs and demands people's lives are at stake here. Um, so I want to thank you for the consideration with this committee. I'm more than happy to uh, take questions. Um, any ideas or thoughts you'd like to share, uh, uh, turn it back over to you, Chair. Thank you much, uh, Ms. Long, very much for your presentation. Uh, let me just ask one question, a simple and straightforward, and um, uh, open it up to questions, commentaries from the members of this committee. Um, because LASA is a very unique uh, uh, drug powers authority, um, and five members of the city, five members of the county, I think that um, for, uh, I think across the board, for a lot of members of the city council, they have not always been you know, very happy with, with, with LASA for a whole variety of reasons, some more than others. Other folks um, uh, uh, are, 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 are strident in giving a second, third chance. Uh, other folks who hear from other council members, I'm sure, uh, have had enough with LASA. So it, the, the diversity is, a, is across the spectrum, if you will, among the council members uh, uh, within the city of Los Angeles. But I think overall, um, there is um, increasing frustration. Uh, on, on the issue with regards to um, the wraparound services and specifically mental health services uh, that the Department of Mental Health, which is uh, a component, a part of LA County, uh, give, give us a perspective, you know, how you see a role in engaging LA County uh, to um, uh, take a, a larger responsibility, to take larger responsibility in the engagement of our unhoused neighbors who are severely mentally ill uh, and have a, a very difficult time. You know, uh, obviously anyone has a difficult time living on the streets, but if you're severely mentally ill or, or, or drug addicted or both, you know, um, it, it is uh, as, as difficult as anything that I can, you know, imagine, you know, living and, and suffering on the streets, you know. Um, it's a 5-5 five -five, uh, city council, you know, county board of supervisors. How do you see your role uh, also at the same time? And I can't speak for the other count, uh, uh, council members, but I'm seeking folks who are not part of the establishment, who go along to, who play along to, to go along, but really shake up, you know, the, the systems to get the outcomes that we all desire. So whether you live in the valley or you live on the other side of Mulholland, east side or west side or south, you know, LA, I think we all actually want the same thing. You know, tactically, everyone's, you know, sort of, you know, jumbled up and systems are uh, profoundly misaligned and, and, and disjointed in, in, in many different ways. Um, so I know that for me, I, I look for someone who's like the sharp tip of the spear to, to break up the status quo with the end goal objective of what our outcomes are, what our desirable outcomes are, and then we start executing and moving forward towards fulfilling those uh, outcomes. And then lastly, obviously, you know, there's current litigation uh, 
the plaintiffs, you know, against the city of LA and the county of Los Angeles. And uh, there is a settlement uh, proposal uh, with the city of LA. Uh, LA County has, has chose to take an, a different pathway and to continue to fight uh, this litigation. Uh, I think it portends the type of services that we need to offer, uh, uh, that we don't have the, the, either the infrastructure or the resources, uh, but our commitment to, you know, when it comes to capital, brick and mortar, housing, you know, folks, especially those of, of uh, uh, low to mid acuity uh, in, in comparison to those are extremely high acuity, again, those who are severely mentally ill, those who are, are, are drug addicted, and you see it, it is very acute in a district like downtown LA, especially uh, uh, Skid Row. So uh, what are your thoughts on that right there? Yeah, thank, thank you. you lots, but no, just, and it's important, and thank you, and you clearly understand the, the breadth of issues that we're up against um, as a city. Um, so I'll take sort of take this in pieces. First, I come to this with the intention of um, being bold, being brave, being courageous, working collaboratively, representing our city, uh, working with each of you to make sure that we are doing what's in the best interest uh, and making sure that we're able to have results for, for individuals who are suffering on the streets. And I think we do need to shake things up. We need, we need leadership and we need to be coordinated and not afraid uh, to take bold action. Now, with respect to LASA is currently the structure that we have in place. I come with an open mind, uh, ready to do the hard work uh, and, and be a bridge builder, so to speak, between the city and the county um, on these issues. Mental health. Uh, you know, Councilman, we see daily the suffering in downtown LA, um, as I think most of you may be familiar, the mental health side is very personal to me. Um, I lost my little brother, he suffered from mental health issues as well as addiction. And so I cannot tolerate when I drive and I see the suffering on our streets because that's someone's child, that's someone's sibling, and we must do better and we need to get out of a sort of bureaucratic conversation about this and really um, you know, move things forward for those outcomes. And so I'm eager to partner uh, with each of you and uh, to make sure that we are able to connect those dots. I think there are some structural gaps with the way uh, our relationships with the county and LASA and mental health services and department are deployed. And we've seen that play out, as you just pointed out, Councilman, in this um, alliance lawsuit where we, um, you know, the, we have the city who's providing the services, I mean, the housing, uh, but we need the mental health services if we're ever really going to effectively make progress. So I'm here to, uh, these are uh, the most very personal, deeply personal issues to me that I care deeply about and I'm here ready to lead and working with you all uh, to make sure that we have those outcomes and work within what we've given and if we need to go in a different direction, then that's what we need to all work towards. But we're not going to do it, um, you know, bifurcated, not on the same page. Um, and at the end of the day, people are losing their lives on a daily basis. So we have to bring urgency. Thank you very much, Ms. Lobb. We're going to go to um, Ms. Monica Rodriguez. Ms. Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. DeLeon. <clears throat> Jessica, good to see you. And thank you for... Uh, even agreeing to serve in this role. I am, having known you as many years as I've had, I've had the ple pleasure and privilege of knowing you. I know you to be someone who is incredibly compassionate about the issue, uh, intelligent, and uh, understands how stymied it has been in terms of uh, the dysfunction of uh, of. of, of of how it's all rolled out and how it's played out in the city of Los Angeles. And you've had an opportunity to have that uh, context and experience and lens for, for a great many years uh, in your current role and just, you know, as an Angelino. So I want to thank you for agreeing to serve in this role. Um, you know, I will, I will just preface some of the frustration that I've had uh, because I'm, I'm not a uh, defender of the status quo, but someone eager to fix it. And absent an alternative, we got to make what we've got work. And while everyone is talking and tossing about uh, suggestions of uh, new structures, by the time we unveil what a new structure might look like, we're still talking about years down the road. And we don't have years. We have failure on our streets today. And so absent an alternative, we have to make this ship work. And so that's what my approach has been. Now, I will tell you, I, I just want to preface 
uh, conversation and to say it publicly because I, I'm, I'm worried about what I sense is often the tail wagging the dog. And when I say that, it's about an interest of, of certain entities perhaps uh, in terms of outreach and a very deconstructed uh, approach that I believe doesn't derive greater accountability for taxpayer dollars. And so uh, you have a very difficult task ahead of you. And I feel that oftentimes, uh, you know, while it might be very easy to suggest that there's, uh, you know, again, everyone has frustration. I think people need to go in very eyes wide open about what LASA has the authority and obligation to do, both as a, as, you know, as a JPA and working with both the city and the county, uh, and what it does not have the authority to do. It does not have the authority nor the oversight to hold accountable DMH. That is purely the county's job. Uh, but it will be conflated and it will be suggested that outreach and services and, and everything uh, with respect to loss of oversight has something to do with it. Uh, it will also be said that, uh, you know, Measure H and the dollars resource to Measure H uh, are wholly controlled by LASA. That is also not the case. Uh, those have been uh, redistributed for outreach services that are provided by, um, in many cases, DMH and public health and everyone else. And so when outreach services are provided and contracted by those entities, they're not reporting their work to LASA. So we have a lot of decentralized efforts that are happening that are not within the auspices or the control of LASA, but in fact, LASA will be attributed to all the failures associated with it. Um, that being said, what I hope for you and what I am optimistic and hopeful that you will bring into this role is not a contributing factor to the tail wagging the dog of interests who have stood the financial uh, windfalls of contracts that have, for me, been why I have relied so heavily and exclusively on LASA for outreach. Uh, not, well, I don't want to say exclusively, predominantly. And it's because I need consistency and I need accountability to those that will be accountable to my constituents and my district. And I hope what you will ho hopefully offer is some, uh, some uh, inquisitive approaches to the results of what others are contracted to do with respect to outreach and have metrics associated with their work uh, that will provide some transparency. And that will come as a result of the fact that loss of outreach remains, with the exception of those uh, those that have contracts that have their own housing supply where they can place individuals, LASA remains. The agency that has the authority and the, and the uh, ability to place individuals into housing and manage uh, those placements through, uh, uh, you know, CES and HMIS and, and all of that. So, uh, again, I, it's... My apologies for, uh, for monologuing. If people know me. I, I get critical of others at monologue, but I just, uh, I'm constantly fighting this false narrative uh, that want to suggest that there's a comfort level with the status quo, but rather I'm here to just fix what's broken because an alternative is years down the line and we've waited long enough and we've squandered uh, enough uh, patience, I will say. Um, so I look forward to uh, your role in this as someone who um, is no nonsense in your approach, highly intelligent, understands, I think, how complicated and uh, frustrating everyone has been, uh, both at the city and the county level, with respect to... Uh, to uh, these issues, and um, I'm optimistic that you will be uh, a very strong voice of reason uh, to help fix what is inherently broken, not to make excuses, uh, but to get to the root of it and have clear transparency and outcomes associated with what's been funded uh, by each of the agencies that touch homelessness. 
and to be willing to even call out that when it's wrong or that it's failing, let's call it out, but let's fix it. Let's not just point fingers. Let's get in there and let's clean it up. So thank you for agreeing to serve in this role. Uh, I appreciate you and uh, God bless you for taking <laughs> for agreeing to do this. So thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Martina Rodriguez. <clears throat> Sorry. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Rodriguez. Uh, next we'll go to another member of the Valley, Mr. Bob Bloomfield. Great, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Jessica, thank you. Uh, I want to echo everything that, that Monica just said. I think you said it very well, Ms. Rodriguez. And, um, you know, to add on to that, you're going to be our voice. We, if we put you here, we're empowering you. Uh, we want you to, you know, to be the voice of the city and not just, you know, and to be willing to make a difference and stand up and fix what is broken. Now, the LASA Commission is going to be reviewing amendments to the LACOC governance charter. And membership for the LACOC is very broad. It's made up of mainly just service providers. But you're going to be one of only five voices the city has when it comes to LASA. And you're going to have a really important role in helping shape the conversation around governance. Uh, so part of that, and I'll, I'll do it in the form of a question, which is you know, how, do, how are you going to make sure that the interests of the city is actually represented? And as you know, the city of LA is, is the only city within LASA that actually pays into the system. And many of us are often frustrated because when it comes to some of this governance, governance stuff, it feels like the city's voice is not heard. So how, how we, and you, you are going to be our voice and we need you to be loud. Thanks for that question. Um, I think that piggybacks off very perfectly what uh, Councilmember Rodriguez was saying and what I would hope to do, which is um, I think communication and representation is of the utmost importance. And as you said, being one of five commissioners for the entire city of Los Angeles, I hope to be in regular communication with each of you with this committee, the mayor's office, um, you know, constantly about what we're trying to do, what those metrics are, what are the solutions, how do we actually fix what's broken and be productive in the conversation. Um, to me, that's the only way that you build coalitions and move things forward. And um, as, as was mentioned again by uh, Council Member Rodriguez, this is what we have and we need to try to make it work. And I am very committed to that. And I'm committed to putting in the necessary time, um, as much time as required. Um, you know, again, representing the city, which is huge, it's diverse, it has each of you representing very distinct neighborhoods, different experiences with LASA. Um, but Mike, I think there's no way around it other than to be doing the work of remaining in, in contact and having a shared goal and, you know, implementing a plan for how we're going to be meeting those goals and then just regular uh, uh, reporting back on where we are against reaching those goals, whether it's governance, whether it's around service delivery. Um, and so that's what I'm prepared to do is to roll up my sleeves and to do that work and to remain committed to our shared goal of helping people, which I think is what we're really at the end of the day all here to do, understanding there's a range of opinions that need to be heard. Um, you know, this is not easy work. You each know that. You do this every day, uh, public service, and it's, it's, um, but it's imperative that we have uh, that rigorous communication, transparency, accountability, um, if we're ever, if we're going to really make progress. And I think we are at a rare moment um, with the confluence of things that are happening, uh, with there being now um, a potential search for a new executive director to really bring people in and to um, select a leader who is able to help, again, usher that sort of shared vision through so we're able to reach those goals. And uh, I'm glad you mentioned the, I mean, that, that is going to be the biggest decision you make right away as a commissioner is who's going to be that new executive director. And that can make all the difference in the world. Um, have you thought about the qualities you're looking for in a, in a new executive director for, for LASA? Well, I think we have to cast a very wide net. Um, I think it needs to be somebody who comes in, um, who's got experience running, you know, an organization of this size and magnitude, um, who's an independent thinker who values uh, 
collaboration, who is decisive, you know, kind of balances um, a lot of different unique but very important qualities, um, who's not afraid to be held accountable and be, um, you know, forthcoming with data and transparency. And I think it's going to be not an easy task. Uh, we all know how uh, hard it is just to hire in general, but this, ha this is going to be, I think, the most important important first decision because if we need a leader who is able to sort of manage and uh, navigate these waters who has an understanding of the unique challenges that LA County and LA City face um, you know as opposed from the uh, rest of the US I think our challenges are um, unique but there are learning lessons and best practices that can also be adopted but I think we need both a leader and a manager um, I run an organization I know you each run offices it's uh, it, it, to be to be able to do both, and and have the sense of urgency, compassion, no nonsense, uh, not being afraid to look at things through a different lens and to entertain different approaches. Uh, business as usual, I think we can all agree, is not uh, meeting the need and the demand. Um, so these are the qualities that you know I would hope. And again, working with each of you to also identify what are the specific things that our next leader needs to uh, be able to, to do. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bloomfield. Uh, Ms. Robin. Um, I, I wanted to get a better sense of, um, you know, I, Obviously, we as elected set policy around homelessness in in our cities and in the county. Um, and so I'm curious about what what your idea of a really effective commissionership would be for LASA. Like what is what is really uh, um, where do you think uh, an active and effective commissioner can have greater impact on the effective functioning of that organization? Great question. I think um, I think it starts with listening, <laughs> coming with an open mind, realizing that each of us, we all have our own experience and our personal and our professional positions, and so we have something to offer. But this is also a massive agency um, and you know the city of LA is 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 uh, as as Councilman Blumenfield pointed out, um, got a very unique stake within LASA, and so I think it's it's sort of bringing in your knowledge and experience, but being willing to listen to others, um, to remain in authentic and sincere communication, and to really um, come at it from the perspective of what is in the best interest of those you're representing, right? And sometimes that means you check your personal, you, you know, as you mentioned, you are the policy makers, right? So a commissioner's job is to represent the person and the people they appoint and to work through issues, have those robust discussions. And when a decision is reached as a commissioner to execute, to bring people together to, to sell it in some respects. So you bringing people aboard and then to have rigorous accountability along the way and, and to be honest and transparent about what's working and what's not working. You know, a lot of this isn't personal and our work jobs so we can always be better at what we're trying to do. And I think constructive criticism is essential and we have to be able to have tough conversations, but then we need to be able to move forward collectively and, and execute. And that's what I see my job selected as a commissioner to do is to really um, uh, have that intense questioning, working with people, and then really trying to bring people together. And then, you know, again, it's not enough just to sort of put something out there, then you have to do the work of actually executing and continuing to refine as you move along and um, being willing to adapt to the circumstances of, um, you know, nothing ever follows through as, in, as in always intentionally as no, no matter how well intentioned. So that's, that's my approach and it's not about me, it's about uh, the city of LA and it's about making sure that we're, we're able to solve problems. Do you have a plan for how you plan to 
kind of engage with uh, council members uh, or with city officials? Yeah, I mean, I think that this is would be the start of a dialogue. I think, you know, I, I would love to chat with each of you about what the communication with city appointed commissioners has been, what's been the formal and formal relationship with the HMP committee. Um, I think having regular feed, you know, regular, mo you know, whether it's monthly where we're coming in and reporting back, we're having conversations and, you know, updates, I think institutionalizing that so we make sure that it's happening. You know, I think again, the, the executive director search is going to be something I would want to work with, talk to each of you. Um, you know, what do you think the important qualities are? What has worked in the past? What's been missing? You know, we also are in a, a unique moment and how, um, how do we kind of regiment that communication uh, and conversation? So it's formal and uh, al along the way, it's just not kind of reactive, it's proactive. Uh, proactively established. Great. Um, I think for me uh, in this role, there's a lot of heated debates right now in Los Angeles um, around how do we respond to homelessness? What are the priorities in terms of um, homelessness policy? How do we deal with sharing public spaces, even as we're building more housing, even as we're building more shelter options. To me, the role of a LASA commissioner is much more limited than that. It's not really to engage in those debates per se, but to think about the structure of LASA and the bureaucracy of LASA and to make a real effort in making that bureaucracy work better. Like, to me, that's a huge challenge that we have, and that's the bulk of the work ahead, whether it be the Department of Mental Health, whether it be LASA, whether it be any of the nonprofits that are engaged in this work. I think some of the, some of the biggest challenges that we have is really in making sure that these big bureaucracies function more effectively. Um, and I, you know, I'm looking forward to more commissioners really engaging on those issues, on really looking at contracting, on looking at accountability in contracts and how you actually um, deal with the service providers that you're contracting to. What are the kind of deliverables they're asking for from you? How do you deal with new technologies in all of this? And really enabling LASA to become a, a better functioning bureaucracy um, because it is a you know, it's an imperfect tool, but it is the primary tool that we have to address homelessness in, in LA right now. Um, and I'm eager to see it function more effectively. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. I've been already taking a lot of notes from each of you today, which I appreciate. Um, there's a lot of work before us. And, um, you know, I think to your point, Council Member Raman, it's, you know, people want a silver bullet uh, the quick fix, they, it's this or that, and I think we uh, have to be more nuanced and practical, and um, uh, I, I, that's what I hope to do, is not to be sort of a, just further pointing the finger, but really to get into the weeds and do the work, and I think structure equals form, right? And so the baseline for how we're able to deliver really starts with how systems are set up in the first place and being willing to not be sort of married to any one particular vision but really to evaluate what is working and not and, and just adjust moving forward and I think that is uh, you know one of the primary roles of a commissioner to be able to help provide that kind of um, thought partnership um, with those that are there doing the work and the partners on the external side that have to deal with with loss of the Thank you. Thank you. Any more uh, questions or commentaries from the members? Seeing then, uh, Ms. Sala, I want to thank you very much. And, and let me sort of surmise. I, I think that what, what, for me, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for leadership. Uh, I'm not looking for you to be all things to everybody and then tie yourself up uh, like a pretzel where you become highly ineffective because you want to be everything to everybody. I think that's part of the culture in the system. What's the city or what's the county of Los Angeles? No more blue ribbon commissions, no more studies, no more reports. People want action and they want leadership. And ultimately what that leads to 
is the issue with regards to housing, both interim as well as long-term housing, to get folks off the street? And how do we make systems work better? Sometimes folks get caught up, you know, in the minutia, in the tactical, you know, this block, that block, you know, and with 41,000 people living on the streets, with 66,000 reportedly living countywide, with the vast majority of them within the city streets of Los Angeles, which has been the open air asylum, you know, uh, 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 with something that you know all too familiar uh, in downtown Los Angeles, it's a question of leadership and thinking outside of the box. So I just want to underscore one thing too. Once you take an, uh, uh, an appointed position, uh, a high profile position, it's both high profile at the same time, it's actually quite low profile. There was a question asked by Ms. Raman when I thought it was uh, uh, an interesting, uh, 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 good question is what type of relationship will you have with the members of the council? But I can't speak for all the members of the council, for the members of the committee, uh, but my perception had been in both the county and city appointees, had they been rather passive, you know, in terms of communication, in terms of dialogue, uh, perhaps they may have experience on this issue, um, but not even experience counts for me. What counts for me is action and a leadership. You don't have to have a PhD or even the shared experience of being homeless yourself at one time in your life. People want leadership because ultimately at the end of the day, this has been going on for years and not decades. And we're not asking someone like you or anyone else to you know, figure out what the drivers are for homelessness, things that are so huge and way beyond our control, deep inequities in our economic systems, uh, drug addictions now with fentanyl, which is much more severe and profound than anything that we have ever engaged with before. Severe mental illnesses in a broken, you know, mental health care system uh, that, act, quite frankly, has been non-responsive, you know, to folks who are, you know, obviously and painfully need access to help, but can't get the help that they need when they have a three billion dollar budget, not a three million or thirty million or 300 million, three with a capital B. So what I look for is leadership and so on to withstand the cacophony of criticisms on the left, on the right. Because if you're trying to be all things to all, to everybody, you're gonna find yourself in a scrum. And you're gonna find yourself back in square zero, not really making any headways in any form, way, or shape. And ultimately who loses, you know, who loses is the people who are actually suffering at the end of the day and you unknowingly you know become a cog in the homeless industrial complex that we have today and that's what i'm saying you should not you know be aware because little by little you know it's that slow boil you know and all of a sudden you're that frog with that boil of pot of water and you become part of that system and and that's why there are many challenges that are before us today of course, you don't have any direct jurisdictional uh, powers over the county board supervisors, over the mayor's office, over the city council, or any respective department and any municipal governmental level, whether it be the city or whether it be the county. Uh, but within the system itself, you know, that we provide resources and the county provides you know, the majority of the resources uh, to LASA. What can we do better? What can work better? And what do we have to lean in to, to achieve the results that we want? Sometimes, or oftentimes, I think it's actually backwards. Uh, and, um, you know, we've had a, a, a CEO, executive director, who just resigned. Uh, we have the uh, director um, of mental health services, John Sharon, who resigned himself too. Uh, and they, we have you know, very, you know, pressing challenges, but I think that folks can get very comfortable with the culture of homelessness without willing to challenge, you know, the structures. I can tell you this, through my personal experience, I've never had any problems with our unhoused neighbors. In fact, every single time that I have engaged them, nine times out of ten, to shatter the myth that exists out there, the narrative of the uh, uh, housing resistance, nine times out of ten, they'll take that housing, whether it's short-term housing, you know, interim, tiny homes, uh, room key, home key, ultimately and optimally, long-term permanent housing, they'll take it in a heartbeat, without a doubt. Now, there's no doubt about it, they do not like congregate shelters, 
Um, if I were experiencing homelessness again, as I did in my early 20s, I wouldn't go to a congregate shelter with a bunch of cots. Some folks do in Skid Row. The vast majority don't. And, you know, so my challenge has been less so with unhoused neighbors and more so those with all of the, 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 the titles, you know, the muckety mucks, you know, at the different levels, you know, and, and, and the bureaucracies um, at every level government. That has been more so the challenge as opposed to the actual unhoused neighbors themselves. My experience, they take the housing. They're happy to be in housing. They are desperate to get off the streets. You know, contrary to folks who, for whatever bizarre, you know, reason, rather than stay on the streets until we find the perfect, you know, or for folks who believe that that uh, if we don't, you know, have a, a huge supply in the immediate in terms of permanent housing, then they should stay on the streets until, you know, three years, four years, five years, what have you, et cetera. If I were king for the day, I would take the loss of budget and I would convert that budget, not exclusively to housing, but I would actually make it, you know, not uh, I would just say, but for housing to get folks off the street, you know, and put a roof over the head so they can start a pathway to their recovery or for many other folks or there for economic reasons. Loss of job or two and a string of bad luck and some bad relationships and things just spiral down and they need a leg up, you know, uh, to stabilize their lives and then to move forward. We have quite a few folks like that today who are experiencing homelessness right now. Uh, but that, that's, you know, at, at least through my perspective, not someone's going to be part of the system a passive role, but actually be proactive and shake things up. Shaking things up is not a bad thing per se. It's a good thing because you're hearing more divergent perspectives, you know, as opposed to being subsumed. And then you become, again, a cog in a system that has not, you know, produced the results that we want with a gargantuan sum of money that ultimately, at the end of the day, it's taxpayer money. It comes from the taxpayers. And they expect, you know, better outcomes ultimately at the end of the day. So I, I want to thank you very much. And, and to all the council members, Mr. Rodriguez, Ms. Raman, and Ms. Blumenfield for both their questions, their commentaries, their, their concerns, and what they themselves uh, uh, expect, you know, in, in this new role. Uh, if there's no other questions or comments from the members themselves, uh, we do have a, a motion by Mr. Blumenfield. Uh, Luigi, if you could be so kind enough to please call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Council Member De Leon. Aye. Councilmember Rahman. Yes. Councilmember Buscaino. Councilmember Buscaino is absent. Councilmember Rodriguez. Aye. Councilmember Blumenfield. <laughs> Four eyes and this item is approved. Four eyes and, and a telephone chime, you know, right there. Uh, you pass on a unanimous vote. I think that the, the council members have clearly uh, conveyed um, the, the gargantuan challenge that, that is before you. But it's a, a challenge that we all share, you know, collectively. And uh, we, we thank you for, and I think uh, Ms. Rodriguez, you know, summed it up like, wow, you know, thank you. The, the thought that you even want to accept, you know, such a task or such an assignment, you know, um, uh, uh, we're, we're fortunate, you know. Um, so we thank you. Uh, we'd like you, I think Ms. Rahman, you know, made reference to, you know, that communication, you know, with, with uh, individual council members, you know, uh, will be, uh, I think, a, a great thing and, and, and a prudent thing. I don't think it's the norm uh, for the current, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, loss of members on either side, the city or, 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 or the county. But I think that uh, the council members would, would very much uh, appreciate that. We wish you the very best. Congratulations, and let's stay in touch. Thank you. Look forward to working, and we'll be in touch with each of you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chair DeLeon. Thank you very much. Have a, have a good day. Uh, congratulations to you. Um, that being said, uh, Luigi, is our desk cleared? The desk is clear, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much uh, to all uh, my colleagues on this uh, committee. Uh, I wish you a, a good day. Uh, good day to each and every one of you. To the public, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you.